Hey everybody, this is Miss Batty here with lesson four in our series on chemical reactions. Today we are going to do a little investigation to continue understanding what could be happening to the water in Westfield. For today's lesson, I encourage you to have a pencil or pen, some lined or blanked paper around to jot down some notes and observations. Something that's optional but always encouraged is to text that friend or message them on Schoology or find somebody around the house to check in with over the next little bit. Something else that's also optional but maybe you have lying around the house would be for you to join in with the investigation today. If you have Alka-Seltzer tablets, water, a scale and some Ziploc bags or a container with some saran wrap you can put over, you can follow along with the investigation at home. Something you may have, but not as likely, would be steel wool. We are going to continue our investigations from where we left off in our last lesson. In our last lesson, you did a great job figuring out where the brown substance in the water Let's read this email together from Dr. Young. Students, thank you for your explanations. The people of Westfield now understand how the rust in their water could have formed from a chemical reaction between the iron pipes and the fertilizer. So remember, this is really key. We were unsure where the brown substance exactly was coming from until our most recent lesson, where we figured out the only possibility for the brown substance to form could have been from the fertilizer and the iron pipes rearranging during a chemical reaction. Before the townspeople can consider this mystery solved, they need to be certain that the chemical reaction between the iron pipes and the fertilizer didn't produce any other substances, in addition to the rest, which could be dangerous to drink. You've done a good job so far, so I'm assigning this final investigation to you. Review the atomic scale model below, which is similar to the model you created in chapter two. This model shows the chemical reaction that formed the rust. If there are any other substances in the water, you should be able to find some clues here. So this is where we left off in our last lesson, and many of you were realizing that there's something that's quite strange about the reaction. Some of the atoms that made up the fertilizer seem not to have rearranged to form the rust. If these atoms were destroyed during the chemical reaction, then Westfield only needs to worry about the rust in the water and figuring out how to fix that. However, if the reaction caused another substance to form and these atoms are still in the water, what are they? And how did this happen? Why are we not able to see them right now? So this is where our investigations have led us. We have figured out so much about the brown substance in the water, but as always with science, when we answer some questions, more questions come. Today, we are going to focus in on, is there anything else that could be produced during the reaction between the pipes and fertilizer. What happens to atoms during a chemical reaction? This is where we are going to start our investigations today. 